What's up, y'all? It's your girl Kai, and I'm back again with another episode of Shamelessly Speaking, baby. Today, we're gonna talk about shadow work, y'all. If y'all just now tuning in and y'all not following along, <laughs> ma'am, sir, I'm gonna need y'all to run it back to episode one, two, and three, and four, five, six, and seven before you come on over here to eight, okay? Because you don't know what's the going zones in the goings. Okay? You don't know what's going on, baby. I'm going to need you to run it back. Bring it, bring it back. Bring it, bring it, bring it back. If not, stay. Play. Chill. Whatever. But um, basically, let me catch you up. So this is just a podcast about all my personal stories and things that I've gone through in my life and realizations and shit that, um, you know, I've had. And, um, and I'm telling y'all what the fuck is going on, you know, and, and sharing because somebody out there is going through the same shit i'm going through and somebody out there is you know feeling like they the only one and um somebody's gonna find this and show them and they're gonna be like oh my god i'm not the only one like this is what this is about okay i've always wanted to help people but i wanted to help people in a way that doesn't deplete me of my personal power and my personal energy so how can i do that by basically figuring out who i am and fixing my shortcomings and raising my standards and and uh elevating to those standards and then continuing to raise them and be an example of human (laughs) you know what i'm saying and how we can make mistakes and we could be living this life shamelessly but still you know being an example of what progress and minding your motherfucking business and succeeding and living your best life looks like because that is my goal okay my goal is to be unfuckwithable unforgettable if you want one of them t-shirts y'all already know go to shamelessav.com and if you ain't following me on instagram follow me on shameless kai you know what i'm saying that's um a shameless y'all know how to spell that kai ky all together but um so yeah so today we're gonna be talking about shadow work okay what is shadow work Shadow work is basically when you have nowhere else to go but to God, basically. And I've never been a religious person. I've always been more of a spiritual person. So meaning, you know, I follow the spirit of God. You feel me? I don't really give a fuck where it's coming from. I'm going if I feel it. You feel me? And um, my own practices are basically just meditation and intention and um, you know, it's just a melting pot of a lot of different religions, but things that have always recognized well with my soul. You feel me? So, um, you know, some people say it's magic. Some people say it's this and it's that. But honestly, I got a little bit of everything up in me. OK. And um, the only thing that I really believe in is God, period. I'd rather sit with God than a lot of people, honestly. Um, and, uh, you know, basically my method is just meditating and and sitting with myself and clearing my mind and remaining balanced that's what the whole control freak episode was about was just basically talking about how I constantly need to be balanced in my life in order to receive messages you know from God on what it is that I need to do next in my life because right now my sole focus is about building a legacy for my kids and making sure that that foundation is extremely strong So that when they are of age, all they got to do is pick up the ball and keep it moving. You feel me? They don't have to do none of the heavy lifting because mommy and daddy already did that. They just come in and they just keep it pushing. You feel me? And so that's that's basically what I want to do. So that's what sparked this whole shameless shit because I had always been searching for things that really was more my speed and I could be creative on my own you know, and add people along the way, but I could do what it is that I wanted to do. I couldn't work for anybody else or, excuse me, anything like that. So I needed to figure some shit out. And lo and behold, every single thing that I went through in my life up until this point got me here. And it was all for a fucking purpose. And it was all divine. My nigga. Okay. And so shadow work is just basically turning the lights on on your motherfucking self a lot of the time we sit in this dark ass room 
You feel me? Wait for somebody to rescue us. And what I mean by that is, when, ima- okay, let me say this. Imagine yourself as a ball of light, okay? Whatever favorite color your color is, my nigga, that's you, okay? So for me, I love blue. Any color hue of blue, that's my shizzle, okay? All right? So basically, imagine this, okay? So you're this ball of light, and that is you and your purest, your essence. That is you, okay? And as you go through life, things start to dull your colors. You feel me? Shit starts to get thrown at you. They don't have shit to do with you. And so your blue start looking orange, you feel me? And you start taking on those personalities and those energies and those emotions of all these past traumas and you have all this other stuff thrown at you throughout the years to the point where you are walking around covered in muck you are walking around covered in shit that ain't yours you carrying stuff that belongs to somebody else that you met 15 years ago but you always internalize as yourself because y'all trauma bonded you feel me and and now you're at this point where you literally can't live another day like you did the day before. So what needs to happen? You need to start peeling away at all that fucking muck. You need to start transforming muck into luck. <laughs> okay? And how you gonna do that? You need to pick at it. You need to pick it. Okay? So I basically was coming out of a postpartum depression. Well, technically, I was still in it, girl ma'am sir (laughs) i was still in the thick in the trenches of the muck okay and i have been peeling at certain things about myself over the years that's where you know the me self and i am comes into play i have been peeling at things but now everybody knows you know what i'm saying the hardest shit is the last thing to go and so i had realized that a lot of my fears and anxieties were built on lies I realized that a lot of my fears are just basically what if scenarios that never even fucking happen that I kept alive in my mind and kept adding on things to it to now to the point where I am terrified of doing that first original thought because of this 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 and this when this 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 this, and this most likely won't even fucking happen I spent so many years, months, days, hours, and seconds living in fear of what could possibly happen that never did. I spent so many hours going down rabbit holes of projected emotions from relationships and experiences I had that I got lost. Like, I internalized so many opinions about me and took on those personas and carried the weight of all of them for so many years that I forgot how light and airy and adaptable I am like I acted out a character because I believe my character wasn't even valid to begin with like I hid myself for love I hid myself for acceptance I hid myself to belong just to be seen and all the while I had already been spotted bruh like what I limited my own power by believing in everything else around me except myself And I prevented my own light from shining because I wasn't aware I had already possessed it. Like, oh my god. I thought so small of myself because of internalized trauma. Therefore, I attracted and experienced small shit. And I found myself constantly circling around those same small types of experiences because I wasn't thinking bigger. I overcame negativity with gentleness. Shadow work is about submission to your fears. You no longer wanting to run from them. Instead, you want to understand them, figure them out. And the only way you can do that is if you get close enough. And the only way you can get close enough is if you embrace it. So I sat with my darkness amongst my demons and observed them. I showed it what it wanted the most. And that was my undivided attention. All those misconceptions I believed about myself for so long were about to be unveiled. So I went back and looked at its roots. In each dark and demented fear that I had, I followed it. I entertained it and I observed the way it moved and noticed the contrast from where I stood. (laughs) 
Like I realized that my darkness was a part of my desires that didn't get any attention. My original thought got so much muck thrown at it that it distorted its figure and became unrecognizable by the fear I placed on it. So I showed it some love. I wiped it off, picked it up, and added it to my bed. You feel me? So over time with me doing this to all of my darkness, my demons, my toxicity, my heaviness, whatever you want to call it, I continuously found that the more I uncovered and added to my bed, the lighter I became in spirit and in the physical. Like I held my head different. You feel me? Like I started to walk different, speak different. And I noticed that my original ideas that reunited with me started to fuse so naturally back into my spirit that those cracks I once had filled in with its original pieces. So naturally, my light became brighter. You feel me? And it wasn't artificial. I wasn't guessing at the wattage and shit. I wasn't trying to match the shade, fill in shit that I think might be good. It was its original shit. You feel me? Like, it was its original. I could see further. My faith was stronger. Like, everything was different. Even the sights of other people's demons didn't, you know what I'm saying, fear me no more. Because now I know that what they show isn't always who they are. Because what I showed in the past wasn't always who I was either. With taking the time to walk with all my demons and unveil them one by one, I realized that I was the problem, bruh. And will forever and always be my own problem. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Like no one can dim my shine like me. Because no one knows me like me. And I suddenly became so overwhelmed with the loss of me. Like that little girl who wanted to help the world and travel and build a legacy with art had been abandoned alone in the dark. And I had gotten so accustomed with my own fears, doubts, and outside distractions that I left my childhood self out the house with the motherfucking lights off, bro. No food, no water, no entertainment, and no companionship besides the tools to make the dreams come true. (laughs) And these tools became outdated, dusty, and disfigured and shit. Like, I left Lil' Kai by herself to fend for herself. And every time she, you know what I'm saying, started crying and tried to tap in with me by tugging at those desires and shit, signaling like, hey, what about me? You feel me? Like, all I saw was dusty, demented demons and fears and anxieties and regrets and this and that. Like, I had literally abandoned myself. For what? Like, suddenly I was so overwhelmed with emotion That like, though I felt so full, I was so sad. Like, I I went through like an emptiness because I felt like, is everything a fucking lie? Like, you know what I mean? And this is when, you know, you always hear people say, oh, you know, she, she had an ego death or I had an ego death and... Or, you know what I'm saying? Or I had a reality check. You know what I'm saying? Like, whatever you're comfortable with saying. Those, those are those things. You feel me? When when you have realized that every single thing that you have felt was a burden on you, you were the one still carrying it and adding to it. And, you know what I'm saying? Like, intensifying it. You feel me? You're the only one that can dim your own light. You're the only one hiding yourself from the world, period, by fears that you placed on yourself. So, of course, with my Dr. Strange mind, I'm like, oh, my gosh, you feel me? Like, I'm having all these flashes of all these things that has ever been thrown at me that I accepted. It was like, thank you, thank you, thank you. Like, even though I knew it didn't agree with me, my character, who I was, all this other stuff, I wasn't bold enough to be like, you know what I'm saying, to stand up and be like, no, like, that's not me because I hadn't even been spending time with my fucking self so yeah I know this doesn't agree with me you feel me like I know what you're saying I know what I'm experiencing does not agree with who I am but you know what I'm saying it's something like no I'm like oh my god I can't do this anymore so I'm sad you feel me like I'm numb I'm numb as shit now you know 
And it's just like, oh my gosh, you know? And so I started to look at people and watch people differently. Like when they would have certain conversations and stuff with me, like, you know, like trying to remain open. And now I'm extra aware of the fact that, you know, I know I used to respond like this. You feel me? Like I used to say this and I know this is what this person is expecting. They're not going to get it. This is this is my, you know, what I'm saying opportunity to stay true to myself. And it was hard because now certain things that are going on in my brain I am literally pulling every urge back to do what I have done for so long whether that's lash out whether that's be petty (laughs) whether that's you know what I'm saying um just be hella like just toss hella shade because shade was tossed at me you feel me like I have been using my wit and my brain to attack other people who attacked me for so long and now the first thing that I want to do is correct that so I can't uh, be on a f- often you know offensive mode when someone is coming at me so how do I do that you feel me like how do I let them be them and me be me while I'm still trying to figure out what me is like it was so much so it was like I was taking shit to the chest feel me like and I'm having all these realizations about my character and I'm understanding you know what I'm saying I'm understanding karma even more <laughs> because we experience karma on a motherfucking daily you feel me whether it's good or it's bad you know and a lot of the time when our senses aren't so numb by other distractions that we have like outside shit you feel me we can notice the karma quicker because we're more in the moment you know so it's like I'm so hyped up super aware now of everything that's going on around me that I notice that if I have one shit thought or do one little thing that instantly something happens to me so now I'm like oh shit I'm like, oh, oh, shit, 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 wait, 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 okay, 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 so when, during this time when I'm feuding with certain people that I was close to, because, you know, I'm realizing that the relationships that we have are toxic for me, and they always have been, and I want to detach from that, you feel me, so I'm slowly but surely trying to untwine my, my self from, these people or these situations or these memories you feel me whatever it was that was that I felt was haunting my spirit you know that it was hurting me and it was hurting the other person so of course naturally when you're hurt you go on a defense so it's like I'm trying to still like guard and protect my heart and my spirit and while it's you know what I'm saying at its ooziest you know what I mean and but at the same time I'm pissed because I'm so hyper aware of how the fuck I've been treated but the only thing I could think of was be graceful be humble it's all right it's all right it's all right you're gonna be all right you're gonna be all right and this is what I'm saying that you ain't got nowhere to go but God because I'm telling you, while I was in that dark ass place of just sitting there looking at everything around me, you feel me? Like, the only thing I trusted was God's reassurance. It could be anyone that I was close to could tell me anything, but I didn't believe shit you said. Don't matter. It real life don't. Like, I was so numb on my own emotions because I'm like... My spirit was like loading. You feel me? Like <laughs> I was getting an update. Real talk, I was getting an update. And so it was like right now until I fully detach myself from everything that I no longer want to be a part of. I'm sorry I cannot interact with you right now. I'm sorry I cannot go there with you right now. I'm sorry I will not do that with you right now. Like that's how I was about everything. Because I did not want to add any type of new nothing onto shit that I was currently dealing with. I just couldn't. 
because I didn't know if I was going to break. You feel me? Because to me right now, I was already like, damn, I've been broken. Like, so if, if now that I'm finally holding all these pieces together, now that I'm finally hand in hand with my younger self, with all of my pure, authentic shit, you feel me? And if one person says the wrong thing, it's finna be a problem. So let me go. Let me go on my way and let me sit. So, of course, naturally, you still got to go on with life. Like, you can't just, you feel me, be like, I'm out of here and slam the door and just never come back until you figure it out. You feel me? So, it's like I had my control freak mind. It made sense. It started to fucking make sense because it's like, okay, maybe, maybe the way I'm wired is, is for, I'm wired this way for a reason. You know what I'm saying? Like, like maybe there's a point to all of this. Maybe I'm not crazy. Maybe I don't have anxiety. Maybe I'm just not filtering and using my own sense of my way of working properly. So I'm like, okay. My brain needs things to be orderly. And my, you know what I'm saying? My heart, and my soul likes to feel things and experience things. Okay. So they know how to communicate with each other and balance each other out to a certain extent. The only thing that was missing in it really was my passion, was my youthfulness, was the things that made me authentic and the things that I was born to do, the shit that I abandoned and was hiding. So let me add that to the mix now, along with my control freak tendencies. And let me see how I'm able to navigate now. So I did that. I added all the little gems. I poured out all the little motherfucking gems out my bed. Put it out my bed. I put it out my bed. I said, dump it on the table. No. <laughs> but I dumped all the little gems on the table. And I'm like, you know what I'm saying? Okay. Let me let me figure out which ones, you know, I, I, I want to wear first. To assemble first. So I started putting, using my brain and shit. Okay, how do I want to be let me see everything of who I am what can be enhanced by giving it some love by showing it some appreciation if I really pour into my art you feel me and pick up my pen and start drawing again and stop painting my fucking face wearing makeup and trying to transform the way I look on the outside if I actually show people what I feel like from the inside out with a physical masterpiece maybe I will feel better because I'm not altering myself you feel me I'm just unveiling something about me I'm showing you something showing myself something about me I'm now able to see and dissect my own emotions because I transfused it and transformed it into something physical. Now, it's like a one up from journaling. You feel me? Journaling, you have all these words and you know what I'm saying? You're trying to get your mind going and you're trying to, you know, you're venting, you know, and you're processing and all this other stuff. But with me how I feel with humans too we're feeling people we want to do what feels good we want to feel so if I paint how I feel and then my physical can see it then I will understand maybe I won't internalize it as something and then I noticed that when I started to paint and get my feelings out that I became even lighter too and then too I became very proud of myself because look at what you did so it was like adult Kai you know what I'm saying looking at little Kai doing a little painting you know your kids come home like look at my painting you feel me but it's just like oh my gosh like I'm standing there side by side with myself and I'm just like we did that boo (laughs) we did it we getting the money what like we did it so I'm like, this feels amazing. 
So I started to treat that with everything I was doing. My photography. If I, you feel me, if I was sitting outside, you feel me, and, and the sun was going down. I love golden hour. If the sun was going down and it's a perfect shot, then I'm going to go get up and get my camera. And I'm going to, you know what I'm saying, time everything perfectly and take that shot. And now I have a memory. Every single thing that I was feeling in that moment, every single this is snack, I have something physical, something tangible. You know what I'm saying? Like everything to me became how could I experience and feel but still remain light. So I had to be action oriented in my endeavors like in my passions in my everything and the way I had always been I had always been programmed that way I had always been like I realized that my mind and my heart and everything was always doing what it was supposed to do the only thing that was missing to the motherfucking mix was me because I was lost in this sauce on some bullshit trying to walk around feel for the light switch and shit and halfway through, forget what the fuck I'm doing. Like, it was crazy. So, it's just like, okay. Now, once I started to get in the groove of me and being artistic, I still needed to be like, okay, now I need to unveil it in some kind of way. Slowly and surely, and like the nerves I had. Like... I was, oh my gosh, I had the BGs. You understand? Like, just the thought. I don't know if y'all noticed, but before I launched Shameless, like, I was so fucking nervous. And I wasn't nervous because what I thought I was doing wasn't right. You feel me? Or wasn't on my path, wasn't my purpose. Like, I wasn't going to be good at it. I wasn't nervous about that anymore. Like, those fears were gone. I was nervous about exposing my ooey gooey middle center. Does that make sense? Like, I was nervous about showing my emotions to the world in a way that was completely me. Completely me. You know? Like, I have been doing certain things, showing myself. It's like having a, a filter on. You know what I'm saying? Like, when you wear a mask and before you start realizing that you your own problems, you know what I'm saying? You got a filter on your fucking emotions. So, it's like, I literally took filters off of everything. Pictures. You feel me? Every once in a while, of course, you do little filters. But just in general, like, I took them off of that and just started being more artistic with things. Taking filters off of my emotions, taking filters off of my rawness, taking filters off of everything. Like, no, I want to live true. I want to live to true to who I am. I want to be me. I wasted too much time doling me down. I want to be me. I'm going to stand. I'm going to stand in my shoes and do the shit I want to do, how I want to do it, at my pace. And so it was like, oh, shit. Oh, shit. And it was like, uh, I don't know. It was just, uh, I look back now and I'm just like, I feel like all of that anxiety and all that rush of uh, emotion I was feeling at that time was like my old self and my new self, you know what I'm saying, colliding. You feel me? Like, and my new self won. You feel me? It's like the battle that was going like head to head. And it was just this big ass fucking collision. It's just, bah! you feel me? And when every fucking thing settled, all the dust settled, all the little stardust shit just simmered down. It was like, boom, it was, that was me. And I was so proud of myself. You feel me? Like, cause I'm just like, that was much easier than I thought. You feel me? So it's like, now I turn back and I look at everything and I'm just like, wow, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Like, every single route I took made so much sense. How could I be here right now and be as strong as I am right now 
and it's sure and it's shameless and it's unfuckwithable, unforgettable if I had not been drug. You feel me? It was like, y'all ever see that movie, uh, Punisher? <laughs> like that nigga, he was taking bullet wounds. He was taking they they was whooping his ass. Okay, they was and he's sitting there. Oh, oh, fuck you. Oh. Like he did not die for shit. Like that's how I am. Like that's how I felt. Like you know what I'm saying. Like that that spirit in me wouldn't die, but I was definitely taking shit, and it was just like okay. Like my mind was like oh. Okay, okay, yep, noted, okay, ha, yep, but it's like I wasn't internalizing it as a weapon towards anybody else anymore, I was internalizing it as fuel, yep, okay, you feel me, like, you throw your shade, and it's like, people and situations were coming at me so hard to test my armor, and it was like, I got you. I understand. Like, I was taking things personally, but not personally as an attack on me. I was taking it personally to see where I was. Like, the contrast I was experiencing. The shadowy aspects of people I was experiencing was just letting me know where I stood. You feel me? The bigger the hate, the uglier the circumstance you know what I'm saying the more conditioning it takes to get through it the better you are when you're out of it you know and so my mindset started to switch so I was like all right like as long as I can keep this up this is cool like if this is what this is I have been doing it all wrong sir ma'am sir I've been doing it all wrong oh my gosh hello like life is so much easier now what the fuck was I doing oh my gosh like okay so it's like then I got into this groove of where my own peace my own comfort my own company was really all I wanted because I felt like I had been away from me for so long and so I had to start (laughs) slowly integrating my emotions back into things around me into people around me you know and 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 being sharing that vulnerability with people too not just my art now not just my endeavors not just the little nudges and pulls of of things that I want to do and I have to just get up and do it because I'm inspired to do it right now not just that like now I need to share that and now I need to be you know like accepting of other people's reactions of what it is that I am now and deal with that you know and so that became that became hard for me it's still kind of hard for me now because it's like I you don't ever forget you feel me like you don't ever forget how you felt you don't ever forget the treatment you don't ever forget where you were and your thoughts that you used to have it's just you're on a different side of it you feel me like so certain little triggers and certain little things that like maybe my husband would do or um, family members and friends would do that remind me of the past like I would still experience my body tensing up in a certain way it, it had always done but it was just like okay let me breathe into it breathe in breathe out and I would have to not let the anxiety take over because it's just like it's my nervous system revving up to do to defend itself because it had to for so many years. But it's like, no, you're, you're no longer there. You don't have to do that. You don't have to do that. Just observe it. You know, just observe it. Just let it happen and just kind of, you know, like, OK, <laughs> like I know. <laughs> like I, I get on my husband's nerve when I say that but it's because it's like I know like I'm aware of that statement I'm aware of that but that is not this now and that's not what I'm saying and, you know like it took me a minute to get my feet wet on really explaining my emotions too because I had spent so much time just feeling them 
Now, how do I add words to them in the moment? Be vulnerable enough, you know, to not be swayed by your reaction, not be swayed by your breathing and it changed and the little things, fidgety things that someone else does when they're experiencing, you know, friction. You know, because we all have our our little mannerisms that we do when we start to get irritated or where we're experiencing negativity that we feel is negative, you know. So now I'm aware of that because how I told you guys, I'm very observant. So, you know, I'm watching that your breathing has changed because I've said this and now I'm hyper aware, but I'm also still trying to stay very present and very dedicated to my beliefs and who I am now. And I'm trying to lay down this foundation for me to walk safely on with my new vulnerability, with my newfound self. And it's going to take time. And, you know, and I'm very meticulous. So, you know, hey, I know, like, be patient with me. Or I know, like, let's dead it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because I ain't perfected, you know, my my responses yet. So I went through a phase of being where it was kind of perceived as you know cocky but it was like I wasn't really trying to be cocky it's just I'm trying to let you know in my own kind of way like I I I see that you know so I don't know you guys like I had never seen things so clear as I did when I was in a dark place like I saw things and so much better and it wasn't because I could see all the time. You feel me? It was just because I could feel it. I could feel things. So it's like when you're in the dark and you're in a shadowy place and all you have is your feelings or your emotions. When you're standing in the light, you know what I'm saying? Like things, they look different, but they still feel the same. You know, so it's like no one, not even yourself, could pull anything over on you, get anything over on you, because you know that feeling. You know what that is, even though it looks different. So you're not easily swayed anymore. You know what I mean? You're not. Like, because the how this person's feeling, how this person makes you feel, or how you feel when you're with that person, despite what they show on the outside you know what it is and that's where that it is what it is comes from agree to disagree you know because other people are still wearing their masks as well and a lot of the time negative shit doesn't want to be seen that's why it's called negative like so toxic and incubus people will always be hidden amongst treasure waiting lurking plotting gawking praying and hoping and wishing you gonna drop something because they don't have the gumption to do it themselves they don't have the energy because they waste all their time and effort in demolishing their own world by wearing their own mask by not being their own authentic self and now you know they want to send a wrecking ball through yours because they're tired of sleeping on rubble while you sleep in the clouds period they'll pull you down in sheer panic and hope that it'll elevate them but jokes on them because I can fly. <laughs> you can't drown me in bullshit because I can swim. And I'm not afraid of your demons because I know mine. And they know exactly how to destroy me. And I conquered they ass. <laughs> but the beautiful part about all of it is when with your time in the dark, you remember exactly how toxicity feels. Because when you can't see, that's all you have is a feeling. But you have to feel your way through until your eyes adjust. You have to walk by faith. You have to feel your way to the light. And you aren't afraid of anything anymore because you beat the one thing that could destroy you and it was your own demons. And you don't beat your own demons by force and destroying others. You did it by accepting and acknowledging that they are there. So now, no matter what shape negativity takes, no matter how much it smiles, no matter how appealing it looks... How it feels, it still feels the same. Your spirit will remember that feeling. Your nervous system will go, yacht, 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 yacht. You feel me? Like, this motherfucker up to no good. This motherfucker tried it. 
You feel me? But you don't have to react the same way. You don't have to do it. Kill them with greatness. Squash they ass with success, baby. Turn your nose up and reach for the sky. You feel me? Like, you you could just peep shit for what it is and you don't have to do the same things that you used to anymore because you know where you stand and that's the whole point. You, It's like now you literally sitting here not only being the main character in your fucking movie, but you also enjoying watching the motherfucker. Like, period. Period. When you're fully standing in your power, your light will shine so bright that you will be a lighthouse for those who are seeking refuge from the storm, bruh. So serious. So motherfucking serious. And of course, with such a bright light amongst darkness, expect goblins to start stirring and shit. Like, expect negativity. Because you have to constantly have negative experiences to be able to rise above it and see, you know what I'm saying, where you stand. What, what, if something is so great, it's going to have a negative undertone to it. You feel me? It's going to. Because you need that contrast. You need that shadowy shit so that the light, the things that are in the light can be as bright. Does that make sense? So it's like, accept all of this shit. I had to accept everything. And I just fused it all together. And you know what I'm saying? Just let it be what it was. I didn't try to make my negative thoughts not be so negative. I would feel them. I just wouldn't internalize them. I wouldn't accept them as my reality. But they are there. You feel me? And you can't always stand in the light all the time either. Because you're going to get burnt out. So you're going to need that shade. You're going to need that shadowy shit. You feel me? Just like when you're hella hot, you feel me, from being out in the sun for too fucking long. You know, you want some shade to rest in. You know, if you constantly always getting love all the fucking time, after a while, you're going to get irritated because you're going to get burnt out. Just like you get burnt in the sun. You're going to get burnt out. So every once in a while, you're going to need some little shade. You feel me? To be like, okay. Like, it's a little reality check. It's a little humble shit. Even if you're your own person that's throwing shade. Even if you throwing shade at your motherfucking self. With your negative thinking. You feel me? Like, don't be so, like, hell-bent on trying to make everything be great all the time. Because you're going to need that contrast. So it's like I started to realize that anything negative I experienced was okay too. It was okay. Because it gave me an opportunity to be better. Just as long as I stayed true to me and didn't add on the negative experiences as personal identity markers. You know what I'm saying? Like personal characteristic traits. No, no, no. You know? So it's like my thinking became, wow so much different so it's just like now it's like that's why i'm like who gonna check me boo <laughs> who gonna check me not you not you who gonna check me I don't know. <laughs> it's just like wow like life is great it's cool here you know but really sit with yourself man i mean i i, I it was interesting that's all i could say you know and I just found out that my my being sad and being depressed and shit like that and really letting myself sit in it and and figure things out, you know, got me through the other side, honestly. And I don't really know if that could really work for other people. I'm not no licensed therapist and shit. You feel me? It's just that my goal in life is to just be unfuckwithable, unforgettable. And the only way I could do that is if I really know me. And I got to do the things, I got to do things drastically to really master myself, you know? Like, and every experience that I have in life is a way for me to discover myself, you know? And I just started looking at shit like that. So, I don't know, y'all. But, yeah. That's shadow work, y'all. Shit. It's crazy because I found myself, like, when I'm talking about these things, even though I've gone through them already and, you know what I mean, you're still always learning, you know, you're never done. 
but like I've I've gone through the thick of it now it's like when I find myself about to talk about this shit for the podcast it's almost kind of like a method acting in a way like I find myself kind of getting there you know like going back there so that's interesting too you know and even now going back and re you know living these experiences through telling y'all it's like I still have a new found like perspective on it even still you know it's like each time I'm still continuously learning each time I'm still you know getting better and realizing certain shit even now with telling y'all you know what I mean it's crazy but y'all know I gotta get up in here and go see what these sugies doing you feel me because y'all know I'm in the car so um y'all know hit up the store get your merch baby shamelessav.com y'all already know you know what I'm saying follow me on the gram at shameless Kai. don't be no stranger danger you feel me say what's your family okay and until next time I'm gonna I'm holler at y'all later cause I got to go now alright bye bye